Building renovations are a virtual invitation to disaster. A disproportionate number of accidents, especially fires, take place while buildings are being renovated. Just think for a moment what happens during a major renovation. You may have workmen carrying wooden beams, ladders, or paint in an historic structure or other areas containing collections. Electric wiring may be exposed. Power tools may be used. Parts of the building envelope may be open to the elements. And all too often, the sprinkler systems may need to get shut off. To get through renovation safely, you need to plan carefully and build safety into every step of the process. The 250-year-old Longfellow House in Cambridge, Massachusetts, recently underwent major renovations and restoration, including interior painting, installation of a climate control system, and a sprinkler system on all four floors of the building. Site manager Jim Shea oversaw the planning and the work. Uh, we realized quickly this house was in great danger from fire. That was really the catalyst to begin this process. Planning of this project really involved bringing together many people, from a, a team of people, actually from different disciplines. That included uh, historic architects, curators, uh, in interpretation people, landscape architects, because we were involved with uh, electrical security, uh, the architecture, uh, we also had people designing what's called geothermal system. Um, it was many people. The most critical team during the process, actually doing renovations, is your team on site. We have a museum collection storage um, team. We have people who were here every day. We did close the house during this process, but uh, we have the public coming around the house too. It was really important to let the public know what we're doing here. Uh, community relations was important, so I was very involved with the neighbors, uh, telling them about what we're doing here. For the period during the renovation, the entire collection had to be moved or protected on site. The first step was to photograph each room to create a record of where things were. Next, objects were tagged and carefully packed. Thousands of books and small objects were moved off-site, but large objects posed a problem. We did bring in some people from the outside to give us an idea what it would cost to pack everything up, create everything up, move it off-site, put it on storage for a year, maybe two, and it was so prohibitive to do that. We could not go to that road, and we did a lot of the work internally. Many objects were left in place and covered, but others required more protection. Janice Hodson is curator at Longfellow National Historic Site. The actual physical security of the objects was going to be a major issue and that's where we came up with the idea of consolidating objects in a portion of the room that was considered a safe zone. Basically, you know, consolidating everything on, in that area of the room and putting up the eight foot tall plywood barriers which our maintenance crew did. In addition to securing objects inside the building, exterior security needed additional measures. As part of our exterior protection system, we put up orange plastic fencing, which delineated the, the construction zone where the contracts could go and where the public could not go. And also we had so good signage, um, because we do have a lot of visitors who come daily still, want to come in the house, and in fact they can't, but they can look over the, the orange fence but not go in it. Creating a regular process for meeting and working with your contractors and outside agents is critical to maintaining security during renovations. We found that many contractors actually had not worked in a house museum for this significance and um, resources here. So it's very important for us to sensitize them to what this place is about, its history, uh, give them packages, you know, on the house, history, the importance of this place, and spend some time with them talking about, you know, the resources here and the protection of resources. And that really did help because they felt proud to be working here. They knew the significance of this property. At least uh, once every week we had a meeting with the contractors. But almost daily we touched base with the subs and contractors and look, talking about what's going to happen in the course of the day, you know, whether they're going to be in the attic, in the basement, and what to expect uh, in that course of the day, and prepare us for you know, what we need to be you know, uh, around for. During the process of this project, we've had a lot of people in now this house. 
And even though we had the barriers in place, it was critical to understand who's coming and going every single day throughout the day. So we implemented a sign-out, sign-in system, badges, a very um, controlled environment. And we knew where people were every day throughout the whole day, whether people were in the attic or the basement. And we still had uh, staff with these contractors and subcontractors to make sure we're fully protected here. The fire department has come here. They come every year. We do a training for all the, P all the fire department in Cambridge and they come through annually and see the configuration of the house. We planted them sort of some of the treasures here, how to access the house and like that. But this house looks very different now. We've packed up much of the collections. Uh, the house is accessed differently than normal. So it's critical that the fire department at least come here and get a tour of the house, which we did do that. We brought probably 200 people through this house and uh, we, did a, we put up barriers in the house which was critical to securing the collection. So if there was a fire here during this project, that the fire department would see where to ax through these barriers. So we had put, put uh, orange X's on these barriers, so it would the least damage to collections behind the barriers. It's hard to underestimate the number of hazards that are introduced to your property during renovation. You need to think about every aspect of your property and the work to be done. Obviously, open flames during welding can be hazardous. But what about the weight that workers and their equipment are putting on your roof? Have contractors been told not to lean against any historic fabric? To keep things organized, appoint a project liaison to deal with contractors and others coming into the building. Establish guidelines for your contractors and subcontractors, and be sure everyone is aware of them particularly later in the job, as new contractors come onto the site. Establish the contractor's liability for damage to your collections during contracting. Be aware of the work that's being done at all times and inspect the site every day. And finally, attempt to keep your fire detection and suppression systems operating during the entire process.